So having gotten into a LinkedIn exchange recently on the subject of whether it's better to build or buy systems that are intended to support manufacturing functionality, it ended up going down a path that had me thinking a little bit about where some of my belief systems come from and uh, why I've got them. Because in that debate, um, it's always good to make sure that you're not so married to your own past that you're not keeping an open mind about what might be coming in the future. And I guess after thinking about it for a bit, I came to the conclusion that for me, a lot of it comes down to the question of where you want to do the work. If you think about putting in place the capabilities to support a manufacturing company in the whole cycle of knowing what you want to make and what you want to make it with, where you're going to make it, you know, at a fairly detailed level, you know, which operations, which pieces of equipment, under what conditions. So thinking about things like um, quality critical process parameters, even the operators and whether or not they're trained, and then being able to go back and analyze how well things went, there's an implication for, I think, a fairly complete set of ways of describing that manufacturing operation. And because of my own background, I've always thought in terms of doing most of that description and systematizing that in an MES layer, um, various others will have looked to see how far they can stretch an ERP, and today we're seeing people ask the question, can you or should you try and build that full set of capability using a more modern toolkit that's a little more equipment-centric like an IoT platform. And in approaching the question of where you want to do the work, um, I'm going to use a, a bit of a metaphor and then make it a little more logical. And I am going to oversimplify things a bit, otherwise we'll be here forever. Um, and I guess you always have to think if you've got a finite amount of resource, whether it's time or whether it's money. So the question is how far can you stretch that? And if we think about what we've described, that full flow of materials into a finished good and all the things in between, and had to say, there's 100 units of work available, how would you spread those units of work out so that you had the most flexible and adaptable way of supporting the different parts of the manufacturing operation? From the people who've got to make a workable plan, to the people who are executing the work, to the people who are prepping materials and equipment to be run, to the people trying to find ways to make things better, to the people trying to, you know, prove the quality of the product. And I think that if I were to sort of peel back some of my experience as a, having been in a software development company in an SI, if I could generically apply those hundred units of work, regardless of the method, I'd probably want to overemphasize the data management part and say, if you've built good data plumbing, if you've got good models for things like your materials, models that understand the notion that um, products may need to belong to families or, or even multiple families because that may make certain aspects of planning or compliance easier. If you think about the extension of those material definitions to include things like quality specific specifications or you know, running specific specifications. If you then think about you know, the production units themselves and, and whether or not you've got a high degree of repeatability so you can think about defining machinery categories or types, and then standing up instances of those types, and then how you marry you know, the production unit and its specs for performance to the material definitions and their specs for what counts for quality or, or food safety or other compliance related issues. If you get your plumbing right, you can build a lot of stuff around that, but if your plumbing isn't right, you end up trying to make up for that weaker data model through code that either ends up in an automation layer or potentially you know, in reporting or, or in the kinds of screens that you're delivering to users. So if I took those hundred work units, I guess in general I might say I'd be quite tempted, if I hit my pen correctly, to say I'd probably want to overemphasize having a good data model and put at least 60 of those work units in there. The other nice thing is if I've done that right, I've probably found a nice way of abstracting away from very specific get machine data that is perfectly presented uh, that has been perfected at the control layer or within the SCADA um, or within some sort of data concentrator. So I think in an ideal world, we'd probably look to see that of those 100 work units, maybe 10 to 15 end up in the automation layer because there's probably going to be some things that just require some tweaking because there may be too much weakness there for it to be able to integrate neatly with other stuff. And so by definition, and I'm just going to kind of gloss over things like integration schemes with ERP and the like. Uh, but by definition, that would leave us about 25 work units to apply to things like what kind of reporting is most useful for different stakeholders. Are there things in a UX that um, in particular, you know, need to be fitted to the way a particular operation works or, or to the way a particular person or, or, or a role would consume that kind of functionality. And when we come to the build versus buy, 
I guess the way I've simplified things in my own mind is to say it comes down to what's been done for you. You know, does buying mean that you can do less work and at what point do things flip over so that the savings from buy are A, significant compared to having to be capable of doing all of the different types of development, you know, to a high level of completeness and, uh, and accuracy. But also, does it buy me leverage in terms of being done faster? So, you know, if I can get enough pre-built plumbing and enough pre-built UX and reporting and enough of a roadmap to make integration with the machine layer easier, does that mean I'm up and running with a manufacturing suite supporting various critical functions in months as opposed to, you know, a year or longer? Because setting aside the cost difference, that may mean a significant... Uh, a significantly shortened payback period, both in financial terms and in terms of enabling any capabilities that are actually giving me as a manufacturer an advantage in the marketplace. So I guess in one sense, there's one easy answer. If I've taken the build approach, I'm doing all this. And when I say I, that might be one of the global IT consultancies who may or may not necessarily be specialized in industrial systems. It might be more of a boutique consultancy or integrator who definitely has the domain knowledge, but it's definitely still getting built by that team. Or it might be internal. Now, again, things are different in different markets, but I'd say that across Canada, the States, now the UK and Ireland, and a number of other countries where I've worked, I've not met too many manufacturers that keep an IT and engineering team that have the breadth of skills necessary to cover all of these kinds of development styles to do a true grounds up build of that end-to-end -end manufacturing management capability. So if we got 100 work units that we, that we know need to get done by somebody, build, you're doing all of them. But buy still seems to leave lots of people with some level of customization to be done. And I think that's probably where some of the LinkedIn exchange I meant earlier got caught up was the issue of if some customization is necessary, does that mean that buying is ever a good idea? Because that can feel frustrating to somebody who thought they were getting something off the shelf or thought they were getting something built, uh, pre-built. And I guess the way I'd express my thoughts on that is to say, if the core is good, right? If we, if we look at the data first, because if we accept one of my premises that if the data models around the materials and the processes and the production units and, and the people are good enough, that means that building a custom UX or a custom report, if it's necessary, should be easier because there will be logical structures. And in theory, if the structures are logical, that should mean that a good developer should be able to take advantage of them with a little bit of a steer from people who understand the environment. And similarly, if I've got well-constructed events where there's a clear way of relating a production event or a material consumption event, you know, in ways that allow me to say, look, in some cases I'll be able to give you an explicit answer. Sometimes the machine will know I have made this many units. Sometimes the machine or the HMI on it will have had the programming done to say, I follow the flow rate and the opening and the close rate of a valve. I know when I've used a thousand liters from a particular location or at least through a particular, you know, manifold. Um, again, there could be times when there's very clear data, there could be other times when you've got to piece that together, and again, if my plumbing here is good, I should be able to manage some of those interpretations without requiring a complete rewrite of things at this level. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, you know, if you're buying a solution, you're probably going to find that 50 of your work units have been done for you, and if not, then you're probably looking at the wrong solution. Now, again, you should find that the work on the control layer goes down. So it doesn't go away, especially if you are looking to automate a lot of data collection precisely to avoid non-value added work by your shop floor personnel. There's probably always going to be some work done to be able to feed the beast. So if we assume that maybe the data model out of the box on, on an off-the-shelf type system gives me 50 of my work units rather than 60, Part of what would make it good would be, does it at least give me the hook so that it's easy to add some custom definitions to various elements that we've talked about in the materials and, and the production machinery and so forth. So if it does, then I'm going to say, well, you might still have to do some building, but it's a small chunk. And even if we hold everything else equal and say, right, so I've still got 10 units of work to do over here. I've got 60 here. That brings me to a total of 70. That leaves me, uh, in theory, a budget uh, in accordance with my little model of about 30 work units if what's out of the box isn't good enough. 
And I think my premise comes down to, if this is strong, this hurts less. So if your data model is in good shape to start with, doing this work should hurt less anyway. But I've still got something like a 50 point head start, maybe even 55 or more, if it turns out I bought an MES toolkit that really truly does give me a good way of translating my machine data. And no matter how you cut it, if that means I am doing 30 or 40 units worth of work in these layers, that beats the heck out of 100 units of work building from the ground up. And I guess it's with that in mind, I just wanted to lay that out because I think too often people get caught up in this question of this feels or looks difficult or it seems more complicated. And the reality is, I guess, that making stuff is what it is. You know, and, and whether you've, you're currently managing the execution of your work with a little bit of a custom application here, a mix of reports out of your ERP or your financial and inventory system over there that a human just has to look at and understand how to interpret, a lot of Excel to glue it together and a certain amount of paper that's going around on the shop floor. That's an MES system. It just isn't necessarily one that's terribly modern in the way that it's delivered. And it may not be one that's gonna give you a lot of advantages in terms of making data available for supporting root cause analysis of problems or you know, doing analysis to see where there's op optimization opportunities or even simple stuff like launching a new product with confidence because you are using a system rather than a set of you know, disconnected reports and views and Excel spreadsheets that depend on the knowledge of the people that made them. So as we come up to a bit more of a debate on the question of build versus buy, I wanted to put this kind of thinking out there because I think that the work has to be done one way or another. So the question is, fully custom built using whatever toolkit? Buy something that gives you some acceleration somewhere in the form of a manufacturing management or MES type COTS type solution, or just carry on with the system that you already built that manages the complexity of your operation, but that is probably equal parts Excel, paper, and uh, prayer.